Thank you very much, Colin. Um, although I wasn't expecting to be here talking to you today, I'm very pleased to be here because it's a very important time as far as public procurement is concerned, both in the domestic context, but also, as I will be saying in the next 15 minutes or so, uh, as far as the EU context is concerned. Um, I have been working in this area for a long time, um, but change comes to us all. And um, for most of that time, I've been in the Treasury, man and boy. So it's a bit of a shock to move across to the Cabinet Office after the, the May election. But perhaps not so much a shock because we didn't move offices or, or anything radical like that. Um, so the Efficiency Reform Group in the Cabinet Office has various strands um, and there are various uh, aspects of procurement that, that are being taken forward as part of that group, which you can see in this slide. For me, um, as Colin said, it's the um, review of the EU public procurement directives that I'm concentrating on at the moment. Although since the election, as I'm sure you know, there's been a, a lot of work on other uh, on the domestic side of public procurement. Uh, for instance, the renegotiation uh, with major suppliers, which our minister, the minister for the cabinet office, Francis Maud, um, has taken a very close personal interest in. Um, other aspects that people be aware of very much, so, and I've heard other people talking about. Um, concern transparency in procurement, streamlining procurement, and improving access for SMEs. Um, I do hope that under the review of the directives that we will be able to loosen the metaphorical hand that's tied behind the back. Uh, and, and if we don't, it will, it, it will have been a failure. Um, There has been a large groundswell of concern about the complexity that is now the, the EU public procurement framework. Um, and the Commission have realised this. And so um, they started to uh, a process last year of looking at the, uh, how the rules worked. Um, after the 2004 directives were negotiation, negotiated, um, there was always going to be a period when a review came about. But in fact, this has probably um, started earlier than expected and in more depth. Um, and also, as I'll come to at the end of my talk, that the process is going to speed up as well. To evaluate the effects of the existing directives from 2004. The Commission has engaged various consultants to, to work on various strands, which are covered in this slide. Um, and I've always been surprised by the lack of evidence base in public procurement, which I thought would be very suitable for a more rigorous analysis and for a better economic understanding of the impact of the rules. Um, but hopefully we'll get a lot of this information as a result of the studies that are going on at the moment. And uh, it would be important to see the costs and benefits of the directives, how the use of new procedures are working. Um, already there's starting to be an information about differences between member states, high costs of process for purchasers in some cases, not so much in others, uh, and also a difference in costs for suppliers in different member states as well. There's also going to be work on um, looking at the amount of public procurement that's advertised. Um, public procurement famously makes, makes up for 15 to 20% of GDP, EU GDP, but only 3% of that above threshold procurement is uh, directly advertised. So it'll be interesting to see, to look at the scope of things that 
aren't um, advertised uh, as much. I mean, obviously, we know about health being a Part B service, um, but it would be interesting to have more data on this. Um, <clears throat> it will also be interesting to see how much um, the use of e-procurement is helping with transaction costs and efficiency and how various member states achieve aims of increasing access, for instance, for SMEs. In terms of the process, we are asking our stakeholders for feedback on what they might like to see in terms of changes to the directives. Um, and that process has started now and will continue until next February. Um, and if anyone um, hasn't uh, got access to this, the, the public procurement notices on the OGC website, um, please let me know and I'll provide you with a copy uh, of that. And we welcome all feedback. Common ideas that uh, come up and, and ones that, that we're interested in pursuing um, are concerned um, with making changes to the rules. Um, often this is kind of described as simplification because the rules are regarded as being burdensome. But to my mind, what people often mean by simplification is uh, ability to have more flexibility, ability to achieve commercial ends. One of my early discussions about this was with people um, from Birmingham City Council uh, and other people in the context of a SIPs meeting. Um, and a request there was to go straight to the higher work threshold. Now, if you go back to my thought about um, that uh, only 3% of above threshold um, procurement is advertised as part of overall GDP, you'll see that if you went to a very high threshold, that very little actually would be advertised across the EU. So I, I think that's, it's a bit real, unrealistic to expect us to go up um, like that, although the higher utilities thresholds might be an interesting level to try to get to. That there is a complication here in that we also have wider international obligations under the WTO government procurement agreement, and there will also need to be a negotiation there to achieve changes to the threshold. Um, we want to look at ways of improving competitive dialogue. Interesting, that was in Brussels at the end of last week, and we're looking at figures of the low take-up of the use of competitive dialogue in other member states. Um, we've used it um, to a, a much larger extent than other member states here, um, partly because I can remember writing the guidance after the, when the 2004 directives came into effect in 2006 and encouraging people to use it. And um, uh, the Treasury has just published a report saying that the competitive dialogue, when done well, is a very um, successful procedure. But we do have things like having to use, um, when you've decided what your <clears throat> award criteria are going to be early in the pro process, being stuck with that. So I think things like that need to be addressed. Improving frameworks... There's a great deal of interest in actually opening up frameworks during the course of their life uh, in a similar way to qualification systems in the utilities. And in many ways, it will be easier to import the kind of flexibilities that, always in, that are already in the utilities directive into the public sector because people understand um, that in the European context. Dynamic purchasing systems aren't being used. We've got to address that, to change that. Um, domestically, there's a lot of interest in improving the speed of procurement. And uh, I've just heard today that, in fact, the relaxation on the use of the accelerated restricted procedure is going to be continued to next year. We had to lobby for that, and in fact, I was the only member state arguing for that um, in a recent meeting in Brussels. 